family is heavily involved in the industry. Has acting always been the plan from the get-go? How did you discover your passion for storytelling? No, I wouldn't say that it was always the plan from the get-go. Um, and I understand why from my parents' perspectives, I don't think they wanted uh, either me or my sister to get into acting uh, as two people who have worked in film for as long as they have. I understand why now that I've worked in film for a, for a while is, you know, the chances of success are pretty slim. Um, and if you're not ready for it or a strong enough person, it can kind of be a pretty rough place, but it can also be a beautiful place, which is what I always saw in it. Um, no, it wasn't always the plan, but I think they're proud of both me and my sister now for, for making the choice for ourselves to go into it because it was something we love. Uh, my plan was always to be the wide receiver at the University of Notre Dame, but God did not bless me with that type of physicality in my body, <laughs> as you can plainly see. Speaking of success, you know, you've had tons in your career. When you look back, is there a particular moment that stands out to you? I mean, yeah, there's so there's quite a few that just sort of like there's there's instances in my career where it felt like there was like uh, all of a sudden people were starting to pay attention which was uh, when I booked The Killing for AMC. Um, that was such a, a stepping stone in my career, of people taking me kind of more seriously. Um, it, whether I was prepared for, for that show or not was such uh, incredible actors on that. Um, but it certainly was kind of, you know, trial by fire and helped me grow. And then doing a show like Continuum, which was a show that truly for the first time put their trust in me as an actor and allowed me to, to kind of take some big leaps. Uh, so I'm incredibly grateful for that. And then it was for sure the hundred kind of, um, kind of changed everything in my life and led me to where I am today. Yeah, speaking of the hundred, you, know, you were a part of that series for seven years and Murphy's probably had the biggest transformation out of any character. Okay. How has that, that project shaped you as a person and creative? Oh, it made me so, so grateful. Um, I think first and foremost, which I think most things have in my career is I, I, I'm always just so grateful that someone's for some reason paying me to do, to do what I love for a living. Um, so first and foremost, grateful. And then as far as growing me as an actor, Jason Rothenberg, the creator on that, and then guys like Dean White and like all of our directors and writers, they put so much faith in me um, that it really gave me a belief in myself that I could really, that I was the one that knew the character the best and I was the one that could make the choices and, and do things off the cuff and kind of go a little crazy. And they really fostered that sort of experience for me. And I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that because it made me a lot more of a comfortable actor and a, and a confident actor at the same time. Got a new project coming out soon. Can you tell us about The Return and your character in the film? Yes, okay, The Return. Um, so this is a movie I'm so glad that people are finally gonna get to see it. I know some people have, but I'm glad that we're broadening our, our scope. Uh, I'm a huge horror movie fan, so this was always gonna kind of like intrigue me from the get when I got the script. Uh, it's about my character, Roger, who is returning to his childhood home for the first time in a couple of years because his father has sadly just passed away and he was the last other remaining member of the family. My little sister passed away when I, we were both very young and my mom disappeared when I was a child. So I'm the only one left in the family. So I have to go back to my childhood house for the first time in a while and deal with the will and obviously deal with a lot of kind of like past traumas and stuff like that. And when I get to the house with both my girlfriend, played by Sarah Thompson, and my best, my childhood best friend, Echo Anderson, both fantastic actors, uh, definitely go see the film for them. There's all these kind of old things that I might have repressed in my memory start to come back. And like, there's, uh, there, you know, there's more to the house and the, the, the spirits of the house than meet the eye. Uh, some bad things have been happening there and I just repressed in my memory. And then I start to wonder if, these entities are maybe what killed my father and it wasn't just a happenstantial kind of thing. Um, so it's kind of like a haunted house movie, but there's a very fun twist in the third act that I will not spoil yeah. at all. You just have to go and see it. And I remember reading the script and was like, that's a different take on a haunted, haunted house movie. I really like that. 
Yeah, you've worked on projects of all sizes. What is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as an actor? Passion. Mm. Yeah, it's got to have a. If you're if you're an independent movie, uh, that means it didn't. Have, not many people have been helping you along the way to get this movie done, but you got the movie done on your own merit, whether it's finding other people who believe in it to give you money or you fund it yourself or no matter what happens is there's got to be a lot of passion to get a movie done independently. And not to say that that doesn't mean the same thing for a studio movie is there's a lot of passion there too. But you, you know it for a fact with an independent movie is that these people have put their, their, their livelihoods on the line a lot of the time and like using their own money and stuff, you know, that could be paying, <laughs> paying the mortgage next month is now paying for this movie. Uh, and you have to respect that. So when I get a look at something like that, I think it's definitely something that catches my attention early and often with a project like that and to, to have people like bj our director who believed so full like fully in it um and you know it's contagious it's contagious when you get there you want to you want to work hard for these people your fans will know that you music played a huge part in how you prepared to step into murphy's shoes was that a similar process for getting into roger's character what was that like? i still have i'm on my computer i have the let me see if I still have, yep, I, I even have the playlist still on my computer. Roger playlist is 335 songs long and is 23 hours and 34 minutes long. I, I've, I never delete any of my character playlists because sometimes I like to go back and, and see them. Yeah. Yeah, I have like, fifth, like seven different Jeff playlists. I don't know how many times I've played that or, I think I've played Roger a few times. I think I've played a Clay at least four times. Do you think we'll ever see you share the, those playlists out into the world? I would have no issue sharing them. It's, I think for me, mo I think some people, because they asked for me to like, you know, publish yeah. the Murphy playlist and stuff like that, which is easily my longest one. I think that one's nearly, it's got to be nearly a thousand songs long after seven years. Um, I have, people seem to think that I would have, like, I have like a privacy issue with that. I don't at all. It's, it's a laziness issue. <laughs> I, I don't want to go and be like, add the playlist, add the playlist, add the playlist, add the playlist on Spotify for, it would take me days. And I just, I'm too lazy. Uh, if, if you had to pick one, if you had to pick one song that's off the Roger playlist that best encompasses his journey in the film, which would it be and why? Do a little scope here, a little, uh, little run through. I'm gonna go with, Okay, off the top few that I just saw right now, I'm gonna go with DLZ by TV on the radio. Just, just, it, it, just more of a to tonally, it makes a lot of sense. And then, you, know, you, you shot this film in 16 days. How beneficial was it for you to have that prior relationship with Sarah heading into this project? Oh, it was great. I mean, Sarah and I, yeah, we worked on a movie called I Still See You together uh, the year before in Winnipeg, and both movies shot in Winnipeg, which, shout out to Winnipeg, maybe my favorite city on the planet, other than Tokyo. Um, it was good, because we didn't actually get to know each other very well on I Still See You, but, um, but that gave us, you know, a little bit of an opening to get to know each other a little bit better on, um, on the return. And like, she's one of my best friends. I absolutely love that woman. Same with Echo though. And I didn't yeah. know Echo at all before. I, I love those two. Absolutely love them. But I mean, when you're doing a movie that pretty much it's, it's, a, it's, a, three, it's a three person movie, really. Yeah. Um, there are other characters and, and terrific actors in it as well. But for the majority, it's, it's three of us in a house. And you know, we got real close. Like you were saying earlier, you're no stranger to horror or sci-fi. What is it about these particular genres that excites you as an actor? That's the thing. I never, I grew up, I never was a sci-fi guy. Oh. Um, it just wasn't what I was shown by my parents as a kid. My dad worked on sci-fi. He worked on Andromeda for years. Um, and so it's kind of funny that I'm probably best known for sci-fi in my career. Uh, and I've definitely grown to appreciate the sci-fi genre more than maybe when I was younger. Uh, horror for me, I've just always loved. I love getting scared. I love watching it. I love horror movies have like a different scale of how I rate them. And mm. I always have fun watching horror movies. It's rare that one is ever like just so bad that I, that 
if it's bad, I'll still like it, you know? I always enjoy horror. There's great horror, there's not so great horror, but like, I'm really happy you tried kind of th stuff. Um, I don't know what it is with me and horror. I'm just a big fan of Halloween and big fan of being afraid and scaring others sometimes. <laughs> You've also said in uh, past interviews that you learn something new with each project. What was the biggest takeaway working on The Return? I think I better learned how to be a, an effective leader on set, um, which I had been something I've been trying to learn for, you know, 20 years I've been doing this. Uh, but, the, you know, when you get the opportunity to be the number one on a movie, it's there's a responsibility there. And I'm sure there's times on The Return that I absolutely biffed it and did not do well at that. Uh, and then I, but I think I kind of, I, I, you know, eased into that by the end. And I think I have a better understanding and better appreciation for what number ones do. Cause it's not like any other job on set. I generally prefer being like a side character that can go crazy. Um, it gave me a much better understanding and respect for what number ones do. It's, it's a year, it's like being, you know, like a painter you have to be the can if you're the number one you're like the canvas for everyone else to paint on i usually am the like being the paintbrush that's just going crazy but the you know as the number one you have to take all the paint from the other people and reflect it and do all that it's like a different job so i have a lot more respect for that now yeah great answer is there a scene that you're really excited for your fans to see in the film and what was the most challenging one to film <laughs> The scene that I'm probably most excited to see, I'm excited to, uh, for people to see, it's not one scene in particular. I just think the chemistry between the three of us yeah. is was really natural just because it was what it was. Um, we got along so good and like a lot of that's ad-libbed and stuff. So I, I think that the people will at least connect and resonate with the chemistry that the three of us have. Um, and then the hardest scene shoot, I can't give it away can't give it away. Okay, totally fair. Yeah, there's, a, there's a couple that are pretty tough, but I can't give them away. You know, the film has made its way around the festival circuit and it's been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? What do you hope they take away after they see it? I hope, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's most of my movies, what I hope they take away is a sense of fun and entertainment that they've enjoyed it. Because I think at the end of the day, we're, you know, a lot of the times we make a movie that you want to prove a point with, and I love that as well. But uh, at the end of the day, I still want my movies to be, this is the entertainment business and I'd like you to be entertained. Um, so I hope you get a couple frights out of it. I hope you laugh. Uh, I hope, yeah, you gasp. I hope you're yelling at the screen at points. Um, yeah, I just hope you really have a good time when you watch it. I think that's the only thing I'd want people to take from it. Yeah, and then besides the return, where can fans see you next? Oh, I'm actually shooting a movie right now, um, a new movie called Margot, which I'm very excited. It's my return. It's my first return to the horror genre after the return. Um, and I'm having an absolute blast. So much fun. Yeah, and that'll be coming out, I don't know, because we're still currently shooting it. So yeah. it could be soon, it could be years. I hope not years, but I, it, <laughs> I just, it should be like within the next year or so, I think. Don't quote me on that. My bosses might get mad. And then we just like to end all of our interviews with a pop culture uh, lightning round. Do you have a guilty pleasure TV show? Nope, I stand behind all my pleasures. No guilt. Uh, what about your favorite movie? Uh, the Big Lebowski. Uh, favorite book? Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Uh, a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist. I like so many things. I like so many things. Uh, I don't think people would be surprised by anything that I like anymore. I like, I love Lord actually. People might be surprised mm. that I like Lord. Yeah. I, I love Lord. I think she's awesome. Do you have a favorite play or musical? My girlfriend is the big musical person. I've never been that big of a musical person. Uh, play though, I would love to do uh, Christmas Carol on stage or Endgame on stage because my dad did Endgame when he was younger wow. and I'd like to replicate that. 
Uh, and then final question for you, who would play you in the story of your life? I'm so young. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to choose a younger actor than me, and I'm only 29. Uh, but I'd give it to oh, okay. I'm gonna give it to my buddy uh, Lee Majdug, who's over, who's older than me, and it looks nothing like me, but. <laughs> I think he understands me so well mm -hmm. that he really brings some beauty to it.